between keyboard and mouse, controller, and any number of different control schemes, there's a lot of different key icons that can be shown to a player, especially if you have a key binding system. So how do you show them an accurate icon for whatever control scheme they're using? Well, whether it's a controller or a keyboard and mouse, there's a couple of things you can do. So how do we actually get this set up? Well, first, let's take a look at an example of what that actually looks like in game. So if I've got my controller here and I go ahead and I move within the range of docking, it's whole day to dock. Well, let's say I move outside of it and instead I'm on my keyboard and mouse. Well, now it's hold F to dock. So how do we actually accomplish this? Well, first thing we're gonna wanna do is create a couple of different systems, starting with the UI macro library. How do you actually create that? Well, you're going to want to right click and go to blueprint, and then there's blueprint macro library. If you click on that, you're going to get a lot of options, but you're going to want to specifically look for a user widget. Now, if you select this user user widget and hit select, you're going to create just an empty macro library. From here, this is where we create three different functions. Now, these three different functions exist for different reasons. Both of these use the gamepad in some way, and so we'll talk about that one first. So the function using gamepad, what this does is just from an input, an empty execution input. So you just type in execute, it'll show blank, and then it's just an execute type. And then we have a then for the output, which also has an execute. And then we have a return value. So what are we doing here? So the input input device subsystem, this is part of the engine, um, takes a look at the most recently used software device, uh, sorry, most recently used hardware device and then we're going to break that into this right here what this is doing is this is basically your most recent hardware what are some identifiers about it so it's got an input class name hardware device identifier primary device type and then supported features mask and then from here um, we just take an enum to string and plug this directly into a contains and from here we're searching with a substring of gamepad now what this does, this, this macro basically, if we come in here into the button press, this macro just returns a true or false as if we're using a gamepad. Now I created it as a macro because there's a lot of different places you could wanna use this gamepad. Um, you can also use it technically in blueprints, but because this is a user widget, if you wanna use this style macro, you're gonna to wanna to create a macro library based off of an actor probably, uh, or something to that effect. So let's go ahead and um, then move on and take a look at the other um, functions we have here. So we have set key texture and set key texture all. Now the difference here is set key texture is for when you are doing one specific item, uh, say on your UI as I have here, we're, we're doing a widget that's just displaying a single button. Set key texture all is for when you're doing things like key bindings where you care less about if it's a gamepad or uh, mouse and keyboard, and you just want to set up all the key textures, uh, just depending on what you actually get back. So let's go look at the set key texture, because that one's a little simpler um, to understand. So for our macro here, set key texture, we've got an execute pin, just like before. We've got a key, and this is of type string, and we've got a key icon texture, texture 2D. Now, what these actually do is these actually are what we're going to use to set up our keys. Um, so I'll show you here in a second. And then we have an output of then. Um, so if we come in here, we're going to call that my macro we created earlier using gamepad. And we return a true or false Boolean. So what this is doing is it comes in here and goes, okay, are we using a gamepad or mouse and keyboard? If we are using a gamepad, we're going to come up here and we're going to do a switch on that string based on the possible gamepad inputs. Now, this is all the inputs that I'm currently using. I believe this is the majority of them. And I also included here the Steam Touch 0 and Steam Back um, and Steam Back left and right. Um, and you can also have a default. What we're doing is we're going on Switch. And I mainly going in. All you have to do to do this is just right, right click and do Switch on String. Um, and then from here, you just have to add all of your um, pin names at first they you know they're blank but you, you'll go in and add all those um it does take a bit of time and this way is a little bit more manually 
um, than the common UI way, but we're avoiding common UI for now because there's a lot of changes that are happening um, and it's still kind of an in beta kind of system. And this way will always work no matter what, um, unless they make some pretty big overhauls to the way switches work, uh, which I highly doubt. Um, this will continue to work for the foreseeable future. Um, so from here, once we've got this split out, each of these pins goes to a very specific um, set texture 2D object reference by ref. So what is that? So when you pull off of your macro, this key icon texture, this texture 2D, what it's asking for here is an actual reference to that um, texture 2D. The cool thing is that works with any texture 2D. Um, so long as it is a texture 2D, you can pass in this key icon to it. And so we just set the texture by ref. So we grab that ref from the input and then we set it to the value. So for me, every one of these um, strings matches with a value here. So let's actually go here and we browse and you see here, I've got all my buttons. So within here, I go through and I've set up every single one of the buttons um, to be associated with a specific string. And then it goes to the output. And then I do the exact same thing for the keyboard and mouse. It goes through every single possible input that I wanna allow players to, to change to. And I do have defaults set up. Now these defaults I have set up, I'm using a warning image so that if players change the keys to something that I don't want to have, but I've somehow forgotten to include it in the exclude on um, the actual widget key binding, um, they'll actually pop up with a warning. That way it kind of gives me that extra layer of like players will see this and know it's something that shouldn't be happening. Um, usually they'll report as bug or you might catch it in your own play testing. Um, but we do basically the exact same thing, but with the keys that are actually meant for mouse and keyboard. So if we grab one of these, like you see, we've got all these different keys set up for mouse and keyboard. Now, um, from here, these all plug into the output, and um, this is one of the macros we're going to use here in a little bit. Now let's take a look at C set key texture all. Now it works exactly the same way. Um, there is one minor difference here, though, in that... Um, on the inputs, we have an extra input on is gamepad key. And the reason why we do it this way is because um, what this is going to do when you're doing um, setting up your key bindings, you're showing the key image based on if that key itself is a gamepad key or um, if it's a mouse and keyboard key versus the other version is what the player's actual key is using. So if the player's using mouse and keyboard or using controller versus this is for, is that input button a mouse or a controller input button? It'll make more sense when I show you it here in just a second. Um, but yeah, and so from here, it'll pass either the exact same way it's true or false. It'll go up here if it's true. It'll go down here if it's false. And then from there, you do those same exact strings. So it's almost an exact copy. In fact, if you set up your set key texture first, you can then copy and paste this over and then make these tiny tweaks and use it just the same way. So let's actually take a look and let me show you why we have that second one there. So we go to our settings here and go into key bindings. As you can see here, now I've got a large variety of um, different key bindings some of which are going to be gamepad and some of which are going to be keyboard. Now, if I did not have the secondary version, which uses the Boolean a little bit differently, these wouldn't show up. In fact, they would be left blank. But by having the separate version, I can have each separate version of the keys. Um, what will usually happen is if you don't have that, you use the other version. Um, if you're using a controller, the controller keys will show up, but not the keyboard keys and vice versa. So let's actually go back, exit here. And now let's take a look about how to actually use these macros inside of a UI element. So let's take a look at, uh, I've got a widget key binding. This might be a little easier to follow along. So here, this is my widget key binding. And so if I go to my event graph here, um, when I actually create this key on init text, um, at the very end here, um, as you can see, I, I call a function called set key texture all. And then I just break off from the key mapping. Is this key a gamepad key? And then I take the key display name and pass it in as a string. And now what I've done is inside of my, inside of this widget, I create something called a key image. 
that key image right here, I am, I am actually setting its texture right here. But its texture, this key texture, has to be set first. So I pass in the key texture, and that goes through that macro. And so when it gets set by the macro, then it moves on to the set brush, and then it sets the brush of my key image. It's as simple as that. Um, now let's say we want to use it in, say, a live UI element, like the very first example I showed, where it's going to work a little differently. So the way it's going to work is on construct, we're going to hit that macro using gamepad, and then we're going to call the functions I have set up here in this UI element. So if we come into here, we have refresh icon, which is this custom event, and it just takes that gamepad key. And then from here, I go to query keys map to action, and I pull this from the local input player subsystem. Now, what you're going to want to do is if you're going to want this to be a reusable widget, you can use in many places. Um, you're going to want to pull off of this action and promote it to a variable. So if we go ahead and look at the key action to look for, so this is a variable here that I have set. So that way I can actually create um, this widget anywhere I want. So in the new player hub, as an example here, you know, if I want to expose this um, option here, I just mark it as instance edible, expose on spawn, hit compile, save, come back here, and then um, right here, key to look for. Now I can set it to anything I want. So let's say instead of interact, I want to show a different key binding here, I can just change it to a different key. And it's as simple as that. Um, now let's go back here. So now that we've got this part set up, we're going to loop over every single key um, that are mapped to this action, which there's going to be a couple. There's going to be the gamepad key and there's going to be the mouse and keyboard key. Now, basically what it's doing here is it's comparing this. Is this a gamepad key or is this a mouse and keyboard key? And then it's comparing it to the actual gamepad passed in. So if the player is using the gamepad, it's going to look for a gamepad key, but if they're using a mouse and keyboard, it's going to look for a mouse and keyboard key. From there, it will if it returns true, then it's going to grab that current key's name, pass it in as a string, and then it's going to grab this icon texture, so the texture that we're wanting to update the key icon with, and it's going to do that set key texture. That's why we don't have the Boolean being passed in here. Um, we pass it in with the macro directly inside of there. And it's mostly just so that if between the time that, you know, this calls and this calls, something weird happens and it changes, you know, if there's some amount of error handling that happens. Um, but once you get to the end, then we're going to call this other function that we also called here on construct. And what this does is this sets the key icon. Um, actually, sorry, we don't call this here, uh, the set key icon up here. And the reason for that is because we're calling this refresh icon, which handles this. So anytime the icon, you know, say you change from controller to mouse keyboard, you can call this function to update that key if need be. Now, I don't do it right now. I do the in range and active, which are something part of my game um, for whenever you get close to docking because if players switch between the gamepad and the keyboard while they're docking, I don't care. The key doesn't need to change icons at that time, only when they first enter in that range because most time players aren't switching back and forth and back and forth between the two. Um, so what does set key icon actually do? All it does is it takes that texture icon we have there, and so long as it's valid, um, so after you pass through that macro, it should be, and then it just sets the texture to the brush that is actually part of the key icon, so the actual uh, image that is right here. And once that's done, now that icon's been updated, so now it'll switch. And that should be pretty much everything you need to get up and running. If you have any questions, definitely leave them down below. But otherwise, good luck and good hunting.